So today, folks, we're diving into the top 10 Todoist tips, and we're gonna overview some really handy tips to really enhance the way you're using Todoist. So today's video isn't sponsored by Skillshare. However, we have uh, a link below that will get you access to our classes on 14 day or 30 day free trial, depending on when you click on it. You can check out all our productivity classes and courses there, and you can enjoy the courses provided by uh, a range of other creators, including the likes of Mike Vardy, who has a fantastic course about daily theming, which is definitely recommended in my books. So you can check out the link in the description. Um, as you can imagine, it's not a Skillshare sponsor, uh, but I just wanted to point you towards the class. So let's dive into these Todoist tips, and our first one, on the list is to zoom in. It's a really simple thing to do, but on the desktop application, what you can do, whether you're using Windows, web, or Mac, is actually just press, for example, a Mac, Command Plus, and zoom into your to-do list for the day. Now, this is particularly helpful if you're somebody that already has uh, a short to-do list and just wants to see things up clean and close. So I'd recommend doing that, especially for organizing and being able to see what you have in your day, especially if you've got like five or six tasks to do. Just helps it see it uh, a bit closer and upfront. Number two is a fairly new to-doist feature and it's called descriptions. Now, not unlike, for example, comments, which are hidden away, you can now add a description, including the likes of links and maybe a bit more detail about each task. This might be particularly helpful for being able to write down how and what it associates to a goal, or maybe even just adding a bit of context to the task before you start doing it. Number three is to learn intelligent input. Now, as you can imagine, there's a feature inside of Todoist called intelligent input. So for example, if I typed in like recording an input Tom, essentially what happens is that will be associated to tomorrow, which is particularly helpful for saving a bit of time and being able to give it a due date without actually leaving the keyboard. So I'd recommend learning all of the different methods behind it. For example, you can learn P3, which will give it a priority three, or P1 to give it the highest priority, or maybe even just typing things like this Sunday and it will appear there. So learning intelligent input's a great feature. And the Todoist founder recently actually shared uh, a tip that if you, for example, didn't want intelligent input in there, for example, you put recording tomorrow, but you didn't want it to appear uh, tomorrow, uh, you just wanted to actually have the dates there, uh, you know, be able to see it. All you have to put is no date after it and it will, uh, you know, overrule that tomorrow in intelligent input, which is quite cool and just a simple hack to improve the way you're using it. So number four is emoji labels. Now, obviously emojis you can add to Todoist. This is something I actually do with my projects, but it's something you can actually do in the label section. So for example, let's say you go and work in town or you work at home, you can have a label for each of them. But what's really nice about selecting them is they're very you know, for example, if you chose a, a, a label that has an emoji on it for a specific task and you're in the focus view, which allows you to see all the tasks up front, you can only see that label and the emoji, which is really nice if you're just looking to get a quick preview uh, of what you need to do and it actually just removes the need for text. Just a simple tip, and it might not be suitable for everyone, but something that some people might like to do. So tip number five, and this is an integration that Todoist has with Google Calendar. If you don't know of it yet, essentially what you can do is connect your Google Calendar and customize the integration you have there. So for example, every time I create a new event on my Google Calendar, it will be replicated inside of my Todoist account. And every time I create a new event, it will be labeled as a theme slot. This is perfect for things like time blocking, and you can customize the features even further inside of your Google Calendar connection settings inside the integration settings in Todoist. This is really helpful if you've recently started to implement things like time blocking and to really take advantage of the connection between your Google Calendar and your Todoist. So moving on, number six is the custom sorting in today. This is something that some people skip by, but you can go to sort up in the top right hand corner. Although there are a range of different sorting options, which might be helpful, be, for example, being able to sort by due date, by priority, alphabetically, or by assignee. Going to custom sort allows you to group by certain activities. So for example, you can group by a project, which I do, um, which helps you to separate the two sort of pieces of work you're doing for the day. You can also separate by priority, which might be more suitable for you, or you could even separate by assignee or due date and a lot more. But you can also go into a more detail as well by choosing sort by and order as well. 
as well as assigned to as well, whether you want to only you to be assigned to certain things. But it's really nice. The custom sorting is something that uh, is a really underrated feature inside of Todoist. And if you can hook it up inside of boards, it's definitely really easy to get started. So next up is actually a feature that some people know don't exist. So for example, if you're someone that captures a lot of stuff in your inbox, you can actually create sections inside of your inbox. So for example, you wanted to capture links or maybe even certain things to do with dates coming up or maybe even like what books you need to read. You can essentially create a section inside of your inbox. You can also turn it into a board if you want to, but in this case, let's just focus on sections. And when you'll be able to clip something in to Todoist, you can use the slash and then be able to select um, the hashtag and then the slash to be able to select inbox and the right section you're using. This might be helpful, for example, to be processing things a little bit easier. Uh, I know some people like it to be able to have an inbox within your inbox uh, to really filter it down. Next up, boards for checklists. Now, something I use inside of Todoist is the board feature, but what I tend to do is I use it for more static experiences. So sometimes in Todoist, you're sort of forced to put a due date on something, whereas it doesn't have to be the case. If you want to, you can assign something to a specific uh, project and then a specific section that you've created. And this is really helpful when you're trying to just um, dump a lot of stuff there. So what I tend to do is take notes that are relevant to specific activities like admin strategy, planning, writing, and recording, all the different types of work I'm doing so that when I go and do that type of work, I can be able to go into these different sections and sort of like review them to some extent and get all the sort of stuff I need instead of having to worry about taking, it's almost like taking my micro notes inside of your Todoist, but I recommend it um, just for being able to have a sort of dumping ground uh, that doesn't really look unorganized um, in my opinion. So tip number nine, you can on the mobile applications customize your icon. This is something that all you have to do is go over to settings in the top right hand corner and go over to app icon and change it there. This is really nice if you're somebody that wants to customize your home screen and make it look to a specific style that you want. Next up is search terms. So for example, if you're inside of Todoist and you only want to see tomorrow, but you don't necessarily want to go over to, you know, that, that upcoming view, which is maybe seeing other stuff uh, and you just want to be able to see tomorrow. There's something you can do is just search using the search bar tomorrow and it will be able to bring up all of your tasks for that specific day, which is particularly helpful when you're trying to organize um, what you have to do for the next day without seeing all of the mess from other activities and to-dos that you've got to do across the week. So folks, hopefully you enjoyed those 10 tips inside of Todoist. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any tips, feel free to share them because always people use the comments to learn and uh, sort of improve the way that they're using it. But a huge thank you for stopping by folks. If you haven't yet checked out our Medium writing, if you like the videos, you'll probably like our Medium content. So uh, I'll include a link in the description as well, alongside the Skillshare classes too. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.